Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Sounds of Her Love. We are on episode 11, I believe. It's it's actually been a while since I've played this game. I, I, I've embarked on other journeys, but I'm ready, I'm ready to uh, re-embark. What happened last time, you might, you might be asking? Um, you know, we got Carrie, we, we took her by the hand, like the alpha male, just, just bleeding testosterone from our cocky. You know, we just grabbed her hand and we're like, hey, we're walking home. And we walked her home and her papa has invited us inside. So that is currently where we are at. And I'm just going to hop right into things. Um, Carrie, still somehow shocked at her father's invitation, idles behind me as I step forward into her house. Are you coming inside, Carrie? <laughs> no, sir, I will be coming inside, I assure you. Yes! It's pretty epic. It's strange that a man has to ask his own daughter if she's going to enter their own house, but it's not something I wouldn't expect happening with Carrie. Her actions are quite adorable. Dispelling that train of thought, I divert my attention back to reality. Oh, there goes gravity, knowing that there's still a large uncertainty that hangs over us. As Mr. Irwood and I walk further through the hall, Carrie stands behind and speaks on to us. Speaks out to us. That's that's some uh, some Bible stuff. Speaks on to us. I some things away upstairs. Dude, it's, I said in the beginning it's been a while since I played this. I've missed Carrie. She's so gosh darn cute. I'll come back down in a minute. Dude, I'm, I'm happy that Carrie's happy again. That, that really warms my heart. Rushing off quickly up the stairs, Carrie leaves her father and I alone in the hallway. We start just lezzing out. Oh, sorry. Uh, wrong, wrong, uh, well, the two of us can still go through to the dining room. You want a beer? I know you're below the Japanese drinking age, but the laws are different in my house. Yeah, sure. Why not? This is this is not like me at all. I first of all, I wouldn't trust Mr. Irwood not to spike our drinks, but I I've been saying muscle protein synthesis comes first, Mr. Irwood. Okay. Back to the game. Willingly accepting his offer, the two of us walk into the dining room, both of us knowing what's on the other's mind. Sitting down, both of us are reluctant to start the conversation. Carrie would come down at any minute. It wouldn't be pretty for her to hear us talking about her behind her back. Still, the thought is something I'll have to neglect. Avoiding this conversation isn't what I'd want to do. So, has she been any better? She's still pretty upset. His voice was a certain firmness that seems unfitting for the discussion, as if the fact that Carrie's in emotional distress doesn't concern him. I think she likes you, you know. The thought of having to leave you doesn't sit well with her. What? What? Repeating my thoughts aloud, I stare blankly at Mr. Ir Irwood, who sits in front of me with a smile. Did he just suggest Carrie likes me? In what way is he suggesting? I mean, that she's upset that she'd have to leave you. N no, the part before that. That? Oh, I'm just exa- I'm gay. Uh, what? That? Oh, I'm just suggesting that Carrie has a crush on you. You know, there's times in a girl's life where they find someone they like. That's the way it is for everyone. Is this guy really telling me that his daughter fancies me? Hearing it is quite a shock, especially from him, her own father. Thoughts rush through my head as I think over my relationship with Carrie. Carrie's actions towards me have never been quite confident. She's always seemed embarrassed or shy, but that's just how I thought she normally was. To think that she likes me. It's a strange thought, yet... Inside, I can't deny the feelings of happiness, the feeling of wanting to be with her. You're a good kid. I've always thought that good kids deserve good news. 
Diverting my attention back to Mr. Irwood, he continues talking with a smile on his face. I've had some talks with my solicitor. Legal stuff, right? He told me that I'm likely to win custody of Carrie. My wife isn't known to have the best mental health record. So don't feel too down, kid. Carrie's going to stay? A wave of relief washes over me. Knowing that Carrie doesn't have to face her burdens, it's a pleasing thought. Even more so, even more so that I know how Carrie feels about me. I can't even describe what either of us would be feeling if we were separated. I'm gonna take a little uh, sip of Wawa here. I suggest you all do the same. High of 93 tomorrow in Montana, if you guys were wondering. So I'm gonna need some uh, hashtag prayers from our copy with this heat wave coming through. Okay, have you told her yet? Not yet. I wanted to wait until the time was right. What does he mean? I think that telling her would be one of the first things he'd do. For days, Carrie has been awash with agony, finding herself disillusioned in reality as she faces having her life torn apart by an uncontrollable force. It's odd. Can I ask you for a favor? What? Take my daughter out on a date. He, dude, he just told us to just, just destroy her. Mr. Irwin is the biggest cuck in the, I, I know, but we love him for that. W what? It seems as if what is the only thing I can get out around this guy to be so full of surprises. What's even more surprising is that Carrie's still taking her time with putting her stuff away. Me and her father have been talking about her for quite a while. Her father has just asked me to go out on a date with her, yet she's conveniently upstairs completely unaware of what's going on. Why are you so adamant about me and Carrie? I reveal my thoughts to him, and no way do I not want to go out with Carrie. It's just strange that her father is pushing us together. First he tells me she likes me, and now he's trying to get me to take her out. Aren't fathers supposed to be reluctant to let a guy date their daughter? Especially when they've only known each other for less than two weeks. It's just... Carrie's never had many friends. To know that she's managed to make one, one which she even likes. I don't want her to miss the opportunity. And hey, you're not a bad kid. I have no objections to you dating her. Hearing these words, they're strange. Thoughts which were never foreign, but a reality which certainly is new to me. I myself can't deny the feelings I've held for Carrie, even if they were abstract for most of the time. Now, presented with this, I'm assured of what those feelings were. Love. The sound of footsteps resonate from the hallway, giving me and Mr. Irwood a clean sign to change the direction of our conversation. So, Markapi, how's school? Oh, uh, it's been great. I'm back. Oh, Carrie, sit down. I'll get dinner prepared for us. Walking out of the room, Mr. Irwood leaves me with Carrie, the girl which drew out my inner feelings. Seeing her now, sitting before me with a slight frown as she looks downwards at the table, fiddling with her braids. It makes my heart race. Mr. Irwood soon comes back into the room carrying plates topped with dinner. Carrie and I still sit in silence, each of us taking occasional glances towards the other without being directly bothered by it. As, Carrie father, as Carrie's father places a di uh, plate Let's let's just let's try that once again. Ooh, I need first a drink. All right, I have confidence in us. As Carrie's father places a place in front of me, the smell itself is enough to signal the quality of it. Last time, his dinner was actually quite enjoyable, like Carrie said. It smells nice. Breaking the wall, I'm going to turn down the music just slightly, just slightly. 
You know, Carrie doesn't like to talk too loud, but we love her for that. Breaking the wall between us, Carrie finally speaks up. Her face, though, is still masked by sadness, possibly due to the events of what had happened the first time I tried her father's cooking. Unbeknownst to her, though, it seems things are going to work out in the end. I feel like if someone uses unbeknownst in a casual conversation, they probably have an 8-inch peener. I'm just guessing. But uh, yeah, that is that is a good vocab word. I'm going to have to write that one down. It's like three of me. Uh, Mr. Irwood sits at his own seat, and the three of us tuck into our meals. In between conversation, at least. So, how did you two meet, anyway? I don't think you ever told me, Carrie. Uh. Carrie's face is lit by embarrassment, both of us recalling the events of that day. It's funny now, to think that a chance event could bring us so close to each other. I glance at Carrie, signing to her that she can explain everything to her father. It's a cruel thing to do considering her... It's a cruel thing to do, considering her timidity, though watching her explain is going to be cute. Well, I dropped my bag on the way to school. My library card was left behind, and he gave it back to me. Really? That's an odd way to meet someone. Mr. Irwood laughs as Carrie's face increasingly reddens. There are, of course, more details to it than that. If I hadn't decided to walk up to her in the cafeteria, then none of this would have happened. Carrie's face still seems sorrowful, making her remember how we met when she still thinks we might be leaving each other. Why hasn't he told her yet? The ongoing stream of time flows forward, the three of us having finished our meals and the clock itself reflecting how long I've actually stayed there. I didn't even tell my family where I'd be, so they're probably going to be either angry or inquisitive. I doubt any of them would actually be worried about where I am. I think it's getting a bit late. Yeah, I wouldn't want to keep you here for too long. It's been good to speak to you, Markopi. I think Carrie should walk you to the door. I'll say my goodbyes here. Uh. Okay. Thanks for the meal, Mr. Irwood. My pleasure. Uh, uh. Dude, I think uh, Mr. Irwood's trying to be like, hey, hint, hint, you walk him to the door so he can ask you on a date. Mr. Irwood is our guy. I wouldn't want to have sex with anyone else's daughter but him. Uh, Carrie, as startled as ever, trails after me as I walk out into the hallway of the Irwood residence towards their front door. Our eyes lock. Carrie's, Carrie still flared up with embarrassment and myself filled with a newfound sense of direction. Carrie, would you like to go somewhere with me tomorrow? After school, that is. You want to go somewhere? Yeah, I think it'll be fun. Okay, sure. I love hotel. Carrie still seems rather embarrassed. It was only days ago that she herself invited me to town. Despite not calling it a date, I still find myself attaching a connotation to this upcoming trip with her. I don't plan on missing any opportunities with it. Anyway, I think I should get going. I'll see you at school tomorrow, Carrie. I try to make a swift exit, despite wanting to spend as much time with her as I can. Standing here with my heart pounding in my chest is sending my mind into a frenzy. S see you tomorrow. Epic. Stepping outside, I turn back to Carrie and give her a smile, one which thankfully she returns. Knowing that there's a future for us somewhere, it makes me feel content. Carrie slowly shuts the door behind me as if trying to savor our time together.
Things for us have been quick, sure. But tomorrow, I plan on changing the course of things for both of us. Oh, this is, this is getting juicy. To finally be there for Carrie, even if she is no longer constrained by the burden of depression. I'm looking forward to it, but it's going to be hard to wait. I'm very eager to, to see the outcome of everything. And we get to walk to school with Carrie. This is, this is going to be epic, guys. Sounds of birds chirping wake me up earlier than I'd expect to. My new alarm clock is quite good in that sense, but I find that I want to wake up as early as possible. It gives me time to get myself ready for another day, with today in particular being of enough importance for me to want to experience it. Today, a day which would have otherwise been a plain and generic day, is the day I take Carrie out on the date. Even though I never called it that, that's what it seems like. Her father even told me to take her out on one, so in a way, I feel it is. More importantly, this is the day I'll tell Carrie my feelings, the ones which I've held for, had for a while, all without realizing them. Now though, whenever I think about her, my heart races, energized by my passion, my desire to be with her. It's a strange feeling, one which I've never had before, but I embrace it. After taking the time to freshen myself up, which involves the usual morning routine of a shower and teeth cleaning, I make my way downstairs to have breakfast. Now we talked about this before, the whole brushing your teeth before breakfast. I, I, I'm, I'm still not on board, I'm sorry, had to say it. So far, these are things I would normally do. They're unlikely to change as well. However, the only noticeable difference today is the keen smile I keep on my face as I continue to feel a rush of emotion. In the dining room, as you'd expect, my family are sat around the table. Well, my mother and father at least. Unsurprisingly, my sister is still either in bed or slowly waking up. Joining my parents at the table, I reflect on the situations Carrie had found herself in. She may not be able to experience having both parents with her, but now she can finally stop worrying about leaving one for the other, especially when she doesn't even like her mother. I still don't know whether her father has told her yet, though I should be able to tell her when I see her, a sight I look forward to. I'm gonna take a little, little sippy sip here. Quite refreshing. All right, and now our father is going to ask us a question. What are you so happy about, son? Isn't he allowed to be happy? Why do you have to question him? I'm not questioning him, woman. I'm just asking why he's so cheerful. But that is questioning me. Still, I feel as if I should answer him. I don't mind telling him why I'm happy, just as long as I don't have to be specific about it. I'm going out later. Hmm? Instead of intensely badgering me for more information, my father refrains and provides me with a quick stare before giving me a small smile. Alright, son. Strange. It is because I told him I was going to Carrie's house the other day. I don't know. That would give him a good reason not to ask me whether I was going with a girl, if he's already assumed that I will be. Neither of us continue speaking, giving the opportunity for my sister to rather abruptly sit down beside me. As expected, it looks as if she's had a bad day already. Her lethargy is all too apparent, as it contrasts with my upbeat mood. She really doesn't do well in the mornings. Mm, what time is it? Looking at my watch, I realize it's about time I left. Even though my sister goes to the same school, I find myself leaving earlier than her most days. Of course, I've had even more of a reason for doing so recently. It's almost 25 past. Shouldn't you be leaving then? Yeah, I should be. Getting up, I grab my bag and head towards the door. My sister, still in her typical, monotonous voice, calls out to me one last time. 
Tell the girl you're meeting I said hi. How does she know about Carrie? Still, I don't have time to question her. She does go to the same school as me, so it's more than likely that she's been hanging around with her. It's something I haven't thought about until now. I'll see you later. Ignoring her request, I make my way out of the door. Despite being a bit late leaving, I should still get there on time. It's the emotional drive that's pushing me forward. My pounding heart, my anxiety, the light sweat on my brow as the morning sunlight meets my face. All of these symptoms of my longing for Carrie, my love for her. I couldn't see her sooner. The late September sunlight shines down upon me as I stroll down the street with passion put into each step. It's autumn, though to me, it still feels like summer. The frivolous attitude people can have towards life really kicks in at this time of year. At least for students like us anyway, since we follow a western curriculum, the school year had only started a few weeks ago. Nobody is really taking it seriously. To think I'd experience this afternoon returning from the summer break, being able to walk with a slight pang of nervousness as I go to meet the girl that I've grown to love. All with my heart beating in a lively rhythm as I get closer and closer to the point in which we'll meet. The point where we first met. Oh, she's not wearing her glasses today. Wait, does she usually? I just, I, I don't even remember. I don't even know. Who knows? But that's that's what we're calling it the episode. I know. I'm a, I'm a little cock tease. I'm a little uh, I'm a little uh, teasing, a uh, teasing Tamara, you know, from uh, that one Disney show about the the twin sisters. All right, uh, that's it for today. Thank you for watching. This is pretty epic that our, our main character has actually admitted that he loves the uh, the love interest because usually in these romance games they're like, oh, I don't love you, you know, and they like don't realize it, but we realized it uh, somewhat early. At least I think it's early. I don't know how much longer this game is, but I just hope it never ends because I love it so much. All right, thank you for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe. And as always, help me find a girlfriend. And bye bye.